don't know about you, but in this year, so many of us have tried to shoot our shot on our own, and, and the arrow just went everywhere. It just, it didn't go the right direction. It didn't aim the right direction. It just went everywhere. And, and, then, and then here's what happens. Uh, jo, Joash is an interesting king because he comes from a lineage whereby um, his entire family was wiped out by his grandma. So as crazy as it sounds, Kenny, his, his entire family was wiped out by his grandma. Like, how crazy is that, that you're a king? You shot your shot and you, and you, and you made it as a king, but when you look back at your family, you don't have a family because they've been massacred by your grandmother. So even though everybody comes to you and tells you, King, what's up, King? You're happy that you're King, but a little bit of you is kind of sad because you ain't got no family. And, and, and when, when he got in trouble, he, he did something very interesting. He didn't run to social media for advice. He, he, didn't, he, didn't, run, he didn't run to Instagram for, for some type of affirmation or he didn't do a snapchat because it'll disappear in 24 hours he he didn't do whatsapp to talk to his caribbean cousins he, he had none of that so he had to make a decision that when life gets overwhelming i need to go to somebody that's higher than myself and he runs to him in private and he goes to the prophet and he approaches him with honor and humility. And may I pause and say this, I know it's the year we wanna cut everybody off. I get it. But, but maybe it's not that you need to cut them off. Maybe if you approach them properly, the answer you were looking for would have matched your approach. Maybe the answer you got was a reflection of your approach. He comes to the prophet with a holy approach and the prophet gives him an answer because he doesn't answer him because he's good. He answers him because of his approach. Because if you know anything about Joash, Joash is an idol worshiper. His entire family is idol worshippers. So it's crazy that he even thought about coming to God. But the beautiful thing about God is it doesn't matter how late you come to him as long as you come. And it don't matter if you come in private. It don't matter if you run in public. God is saying before this year is over, make sure you come, but here's the story. It's got two interesting characters. Really, it's got Elijah, it's got Elijah, and it's got the king. And, and it's got Elisha, it's got the king. Elisha is a man of God. He spent his entire life trying to be a prophet. He followed Elijah all around to learn how to be a prophet. And many of you in this year, the reason why you haven't graduated this year to the next space of your life is because you haven't been willing to follow anyone. You cannot graduate without having someone to emulate. So you want to be great, but you don't want to follow anyone long enough for them to give you what they consider is worth you receiving. But, but here's the thing, Elijah's a man of God. This time of the text, he's been following God for 56 years. He's been a minister of the gospel for 56 years. He's healed people. He's delivered people of leprosy, which was like a type of AIDS in our time. He's a powerful man of God. If you were to follow his Twitter account, he has thousands of followers. If you were to follow his Instagram, he's got a blue verified check mark. He is the man. But it's amazing that God doesn't hide that even though he healed people, He's on his deathbed. How do you reconcile the thing that God used you to help others with is the thing you're struggling with yourself. 
See, see, this culture, we're good as long as God uses me to heal others and I don't get sick. But what do you do when God uses you to help other people's finances and your finances are in a mess? What do you do when you help everybody else relationally and you're there for everybody? You stand with everybody and nobody stands with you. What I said to the first service is, if life makes you sick, don't let it make you sick of God. Because the reality of the matter is, is sometimes our lives are a contradiction to what we are experiencing. I know I went to church. I know I said I was going to pass the exam. But what happens when your friends pass and you don't pass and you go into God every week and God isn't responding to you like he's responding to the idols? But, but, but y'all, here's, here's the crazy part. He, he goes to Elisha for answers. And God is using a man that's dying. Maybe God ain't using us because we ain't dead yet. Because we so alive, God can't use us. That even on his deathbed, he was available for God to use him. And here's the interesting thing. That God was using Elisha. But the place that he was using, which was Elisha, the prophet's chamber, the prophet was going to die, which means that eventually Joash would not be able to go to the place that he got answers. Sometimes God will dry up the place that was your answer so that he can dis help you discover another place of answers. Okay, so, so, so here we go. Here we go. God used a weak instrument, Elisha, and used him to be strong even when he was physically weak. So maybe God is asking us tonight to exchange our strength and exchange our weakness for his strength. But, but, but I need you to say it with, with like you ate uh, some collard greens before you came here. Somebody say, shoot your shot. You didn't say it loud enough. Say it so the people online can hear you. Say, shoot your shot. So, so one, one of the things that he does before he shoots his shot is he says, prophet, what, what do I need to do? He says, you, you got to shoot your shot. But before you shoot your shot, the prophet puts his hand on the arrow. Because I don't want to shoot a shot that God's hand ain't in. Because some of us are, we too old to make mistakes. We're too far along the calendar to go back another year, another semester, another life cycle. I need to make sure if I'm going to ride with you this year, I need to make sure God is in it. I'm not just going to take any opportunity because it looks good. I'm too old to make mistakes. I don't want to have my heart broken time and time again because I didn't ask God to put his hand on my decisions. There's a lot of decisions that we make that seem good, but it's God's hand on them. I know it pays good, but it's God's hand on them. I know he smells good, but it's God's hand on them. I know she looks good, but it's God's hands on them. This is the year I don't just make a decision. You can call me deep. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. I need to go pray about it. Why? You so deep. No, I done made so many decisions that were so bad. They left me deep in depression, deep in despair, deep in emotional turmoil. I'm not doing anything without checking off God's box first. But here's the thing. King, I'm going to help you shoot your shot. But I need you to know, King, you're an idol worshiper. Idol worship comes from the heart. If your heart ain't right, you won't see right. So it don't matter how powerful your arrow is. If your heart ain't right, you're not going to see right. Because there is a difference between sight and insight. Sight is limited. Insight is unlimited. 
Sight says this is bad. Insight says it's going to work for my good. Sight says you ain't going to make it. Insight says God's going to make a way. Sight says you're in a desert. Insight says God's going to make rivers in the desert. Sight says I'm not going to graduate. Insight says God's going to make a way. Sight says you're in student loan debt. Insight says my God owns a hill a cattle upon a thousand hills. Sight says you are alone. Insight says I'm not alone. If I make my bed in hell, he is with me. Sight will limit what God is doing. And here it is. Elijah tells him an instruction. Shoot your arrow towards the east window. Follow instructions. Because some of you are aiming, but you're not aiming nowhere. I need to know what you're trying to hit. Because how do you know if you hit it if you don't know where you're aiming? He says, no, I don't need you to aim in the west window because that's not your fight. You need to aim in the east window, which means stop taking on battles that have nothing to do with you. You're trying to fight the west side. You're trying to fight the south side. You're trying to fight the north side. Baby, your fight's on the east side. You need to focus and shoot towards the east. Here it is. Elijah gives him instruction, tells him, take the bow and arrow, which symbolizes strength and the victory that God was going to give the king by taking his hand and becoming an agent of God's power. God was going to use an idol worshiper to be an instrument of his power. Because what God was not looking at, what God does not look at our ability, he looks at our availability. A lot of you have ability but you don't have availability. You graduated from college, still don't know what to do because you did not give God your availability. You gave him your ability. You gave him your cognitive dissonance, but you did not give God your availability. And God is saying, I need your availability. Here it is. Elisha was mad at the king. Take the arrow, strike the ground three times. Actually, he told him, strike the ground. He strikes it. He got another arrow, strikes it. Gets another arrow, strikes it. Yeah, man, I'm tired. And God looks at him and says, I, I, I want to know, why did you only hit the ground three times? What made you hit it three times? You had more arrows. Oh, don't look at him like that, beloved. You know why he hit the ground three times? Because he had a limit on what he thought God could do. All of us in this room, with your beautiful self, dressed up, well put together self, if I told you what God could do, some of you be like, amen. And then if I told you it was you, you would start telling me why he can't. Because all of us say we believe in a big God. But we all have limits on how big we think he is. All of us will say, how great is our God. But all of us, if we really get down deep and have an honest conversation, we have limits on how big we really think he is. If all of us were being transparent for this moment, we would say, yeah, I believe God can do anything. I believe God can do big things. And if I say, do you think God could pay your student loans off tonight? Well, you know, pastor, he's big, but I don't know about all that. Do you think God can turn your situation around? And do you think God can take one year and pay you back in one day for all that you've been through in one year. No, God, I don't know about that. God is big, but he, I don't know about that. He may be big for other people. And then I could see Joash telling God all the reasons why he didn't strike the ground. Well, I didn't strike the ground because my family's all jacked up. You know, grandma killed my entire family, so I suffer from trauma. And I got another reason why I didn't strike the ground. And God's saying, I never asked you any of that. I I simply told you strike the ground and you struck the ground three times and you will only win three times which means God had a plan for him to win six or seven times but because he only had confidence to win three times God confirmed what he was okay with 
I need y'all church folk to stop telling people what God has for you is for you because it ain't true because throughout scripture you see that people who do not steward well what God has for them God removes it from them and gives it to somebody else if you only have faith to believe God to strike the ground three times God will let you settle at the level that you confirmed is okay with you here's the thing you cannot be comfortable and courageous at the same time you got to pick one or the other We cannot be comfortable and courageous at the same time. You got to pick one or the other. And, and the king, you know, honestly, the king did it half-heartedly. And he struck the ground half-heartedly because he had internal reservations on why God wouldn't do it. Maybe somebody let him down. Maybe, maybe, maybe he shot before and missed. You know, there's nothing that hurts your confidence more than when you shoot and miss. It takes away your instinct. My, my son, he, he's got a skateboard. He's, th he's four. And I'll tell him, hey, boy, you keep riding around, you're going to bust your head open riding like that. And he said, I never fall. I started thinking about it. I'm like, that boy crazy. But then I started really thinking about it. He has no fear because he's never missed his shot. He has no concept of falling off the skateboard because he's never missed his shot. And there are moments where I see him riding and when he knows that he cannot do it on his own, he will hold on to the ledge so that he won't fall off and he'll look at me and say, see daddy, I'm not falling off. And the only reason why he's not falling is not because he's skilled, it's because something is holding him up. And may I suggest to you this year, the only reason why you didn't lose your mind is not because you were skilled, but because something was holding you up. Every time you are about to trip on your own decision, Raw held you up. Let me help elevate your faith. Because some of you, if I gave you a bow and arrow and told you to shoot, you'd only shoot to the level of your comfort. Because you don't believe you could be first. You, you really don't. I know you say it. I know you say it. We all say, it. yeah, I'm going to be the first in my family to turn it around. You don't really believe it. I ain't never seen it done before. I don't know how it's going to get done. You, you really don't believe it because within ourselves, we have this limitation on God and we have this limitation on ourselves. And the both of them are intention because we don't believe God can do it. And then we believe if God can do it, he won't do it through somebody like me. And, and Joe Ash is, his name, he's, he's wrestling because he, he's, he's, he's trying to figure out, like, God, why did I strike the ground only three times when I could have struck it more? And God is trying to tell him, sometimes you got to keep striking until you see what you saw. And you will not see it until you keep striking. Because some walls don't come down after the first strike. Because what God told him was, you're going to strike it and you're going to win once. And then after that, you're going to win again. Which let him know that some victories are not instant, they're incremental. See, you want instant victory, that's not how God works. Sometimes God gives you incremental victory. See, I know you believe that 2020, God woke up and said, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. It's 2020. God does not live by calendars. He lives on a continuum. There are no breaks in God. There are no calendar dates in God. God is not waiting till 2020 to give you clear vision. He had clear vision last year. He had clear vision the year before. God is doing a continuum. He's building on what he built on top of what he built. And I know we use calendars to measure what we believe God is about to do. But the reality of it is, is God God has already been doing it even before the calendar changed. But let me help you believe because you know 
it's hard to believe. You no, know, I know how it is. Bro, you don't know me. I'm from the hood. You know, you don't know me. I graduated from UCF. I, I mean, I'm, I'm good. I got connections, but no, there's some places I can't go because I'm not. I don't know anybody there. And God has a way of meeting you where you're short. Somebody say, shoot your shot. No, no. So, so let me help you. You've got to learn how to shoot your shot in private because some of you only shoot your shot when cameras are around. And, and you only want to do it as long as you're going to get an applause from it. And if you don't learn how to shoot your shot in private, how can anybody trust that when you do it in public, you'll do it well? Let me, let me, let me. All right, this, this the, you're not going to touch your neighbor because, you know, at, at the other church down the street, they already told their neighbor to touch the neighbor 18 times. But, but, but let me tell you this. I want you to look at your neighbor just really good and just say to him, I need you to shoot your shot. Oh, look at him. So I, I need you to shoot your shot. How, how many believe that God can do, God can do beyond your educational background? Oh, no, 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 I, I need to build your faith because some of you will say, no, that's just emotional, but I'm going to prove to you that's not. How many believe that God can call your name in rooms your feet has never been in? How, how, many, how many believe that God can call other people to do good to you that don't even know you? How many believe that God can pick your name out of all your family and even though you have a bad background, God can still use you to bring glory out of your life? How many believe that in 2020 that I don't know how God's going to do it. I don't know where God's going to do it, but I'm available for God to do it. It may not be perfect. It may not be the way that I planned, but my answer is, Lord, I am available. Here it is, y'all. So I met um, a banker to share with him. We've been working for eight years together, and I met with him to share with him a vision that I felt God had put on our hearts and uh, we've been working for eight years together so we have a relationship and the banker looked at my vision and said I think that's too much for you it made me so broken because I was thinking it's not your thought but I thought you'd look at our history and say I trust you can make it happen but sometimes God will dry up a place because he knows that you're making the you're starting to love the place more than the person of the place and so God has to show you that I sometimes have to close a door to show you other doors that you didn't know anything about but because you love that door so much if I don't close it for you, you'll keep going to a door that doesn't really believe in you. And so, we, we were on a cruise, church cruise, got off the cruise, and um, God will use other people to confirm the shots you shoot in private. I, I, I want you... <laughs> You know, I've been in church before and people be like, I want you to give God a praise for what he's about to do. And I sit there and be like, bro, you're wasting my breath. But now I'm a believer. Listen, I, I'm a believer. Because sometimes you might be thinking, oh, that's whatever. And God might just be testing your limits. God might be testing to see, do you really, can you thank me without seeing it? Or do you have to hold it in your hand to believe it? Can you thank me for a child that you've been believing for and you ain't had yet, but you walking around saying, yup, next year I'm going to be pregnant. I don't know how it's going to happen. Doctor said it ain't going to be happening, but I believe it's going to happen because sometimes you got to receive it before you receive it. You got to, y'all catch that on your way home. You got to receive it before you receive it. I don't know about you, but I'm saying in 2020, God's raising up people with my name on their heart. God's got people with my name on their spirit. He, I got to receive it. Say it again. You got to receive it. So, so I answered a call from a number I did not recognize because you cannot expect God to do great things and you don't answer 
things that don't look familiar to you. Because sometimes God will send unfamiliar things because you've outgrown the familiar spaces. And the man says to me, he says, oh, we pastor an inner city church, Pine Hills, Kissimmee. And uh, we do some outreaches, a lot of outreaches, and our heart is to do some incredible things. And the guy says, hey man, I know this is gonna sound really weird to you, um, but we've been thinking about you. All right, praise God, amen, praise God, amen, thank you. He says, um, we've been thinking about you and uh, a group of us decided that uh, we saw a video you had of you doing a $200 blessing. And uh, we thought it just touched our heart. And I was like, okay. He said, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I know this is all kind of strange. I apologize. I know this call is kind of strange, but w we just thought that y'all only do it once a month. And, I, you know, we're not trying to be offensive or anything, but we just thought that wasn't enough. And in my heart, I'm thinking, well, it ain't your money, so, you know. You ever see somebody say, I don't like your outfit? And it's like, well, if you don't like it, fix it. He says, well, Pastor David, what we want to do is we want to meet with you because we, we, we came together and brought you a check. And it's a check that we are going to give to your church because we want you to give it away next year. And we just didn't want to see you all use your own money every year to give out to the community. Yeah, y'all clapping like y'all bougie. Y'all, y'all, y'all got money. Okay, y'all. I talk. Okay, at six thirty they were preaching there. Y'all, y'all got the y'all the money crowd. I, 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 let me put in your language. Somebody call you and say, I want to see your business do something and not use its own budget. I, I want to be the one. So I said, okay. I said, okay. Well. I said, well, can, can we meet? Oh, absolutely. When would you like to meet? I, I could ride my bike to your house, Uber, wherever you want to meet. We can meet. He says, oh, we'll meet at the church. We meet at the church, and he says, hey, just a few things I want you to know. Don't mention our name. Don't tell anybody we gave this to you. Y'all just go ahead and do it. No strings attached. He says, this check is yours. You know, the spiritual side of me want to say hallelujah thank you Jesus the inside of me want to say well how much is in that check because I need to know you talking about two hundred dollars I'm thinking hey, maybe he's giving a thousand dollars for us to bless five months worth y'all ain't ready y'all I'm service is over y'all ain't ready They gave us a check for $44,000. Said, we want you to give away $200 Monday through Thursday for 52 weeks. Y'all ain't saying nothing because when you shoot your shot, only God can do something that big for you. Understand? Sometimes God got to do it for somebody else so you can be a witness, so you can raise your faith and you can believe God. Shoot, if you can do that for that curly hair pastor, you can do it for me. If you can do it for them, you can do it for me. But I got to be available. Shot. But, so this church next year, starting in February, we're still trying to figure out how to do that. How to give away $200 a day, four days a week, Monday through Thursday, 52 weeks. Because it's never been done before. It's never been done before. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Maybe God 
let you have a bad year to set you up for it's never been done before. Maybe the storm was preparing you for it's never been done before. Maybe the heartache was preparing you for it's never been done before. It's never, ever, 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 ever been done before. So as much as I wanted to just leave you on that high note and run around the church and celebrate God and celebrate his goodness and celebrate his favor and celebrate his love and celebrate his mercy because I've seen God do it. I've seen God put my name on people's heart that I've never even known. I've seen God do it. I've seen God. I've seen when you thought God forgot about you and you thought God didn't know you. I've seen him do it before. You can't tell me what God can do because I've seen him do it. Here it is, y'all. It'd be spiritual irresponsible not to communicate this next point to you. Because I started it by saying this. When your heart's not right, you can't see right. When your heart's not right, you can't see right. Okay, so, so let me give you this in context. When your heart's not right, you don't see right. So one of my mentors says this. Okay. Sometimes we wait for the person that broke us. Sometimes we wait for the person that broke us to come back and heal us. And the reason why many of us can't shoot our shot is because we're waiting for that person that broke, that broke us to come back and heal us. Do you know some of you are waiting for an apology you're never going to get? Your whole life is on hold, waiting for an experience that you're never going to get. Waiting for a moment that you're never going, no matter how good you are to them, no matter how much you love them, no matter how much you flower them, no matter how much you esteem, you're not going to get that moment. So you've got to learn that sometimes the people that break us ain't going to come back and fix us. So here's what it is. So when the man told me, I think that's too much for you, I could have instantly went in my flesh and said things to him that would make me feel better for the moment, but will cancel my future. How many of you felt good for the moment? And you're blaming God for your year when your mouth canceled your future. So here it is. It's so important. Because a lot of us, man, this, this, is the, this is the greatest thing in the world. Like, y'all shooting your shot. And some of you are shooting, and you're, and you're shooting your shot, and you're shooting. But your heart ain't good. One of my guys... He caught a viral infection, ended up in the hospital. And the viral infection, the doctor said, was what got you to the hospital. What I'm saying to you is, when your heart's not right, you start catching stuff that you shouldn't catch because your heart's not right. When your heart's not right, you start catching stuff that's floating in the air that wasn't meant for you. But because your heart's not right, you can't receive what God has called for you because your heart's not right. And some of you 
are sick. You're winning and sick. Because we celebrate shots made. And eventually if you shoot enough, you're going to make one. But just because you made one doesn't mean you're a good shot. So in 2020, it may not go the way you plan. I can't promise you that this is going to be your best year ever. We may hope that, but we're going to lose people we love. Our hearts are going to be broken by people we trusted. But if you don't guard your heart, you'll start catching stuff that's in the air that don't belong to you. Your marriage isn't broken, your heart is sick. So you don't hear them, you hear argument when they say an affirmation. Because when your heart is sick, you catch stuff that don't belong to you. Hey, I, I want to help you, here's what I want to tell you. You need to have conversations that are hard so you can heal and move on. Because this generation has mastered the art of cutting it off. But here's what I've learned. Whatever you don't deal with, will deal with you tomorrow. Some of you are angry. You ain't even happy. Your heart is sick. It don't even matter if we make you a queen. I'm a queen. Put my crown on my head. We got a sick crown. I'm a king. But you're a sick king. Because out of the issues of your heart, life flows. So don't just shoot your shot this year. Guard your heart. Because I've seen many people win in life and lose their heart. So they pull up to a home and not happy because their heart is sick. Pull up to a big paycheck and can't enjoy it because their heart is sick. So while you shoot your shot, guard your heart. Because there are infections looking for sick hearts. And here's the thing that's crazy. When your heart is sick, even if you physically want to go somewhere, they have to hold you longer than what you want to be held because your heart can't be trusted. You know why some of you sing? It's because God knows your heart is sick. the prophet looked him in the face and told him the truth you need to have hard conversations and then let it go some of you are like young men waiting on the porch for daddy to come back and he ain't coming you need to have hard conversations so you can really be free my prayer for you today not just to excite you about another year but it's to prophetically align your heart so that you don't shoot your shot and get promoted and be unhappy 
because your heart is sick. Bow your heads, Father. I have truly honored what you asked me to say. And it is my prayer that your children who are called by your name heard what you wanted to say to them. Help us, Holy Spirit. We got a lot of things to fight in this world and it's not always the devil. Sometimes it's ourselves. So Father, give me a clean heart, a refined heart, a pure heart that I can shoot my shot and be at peace. Help my brother and say, oh God, they've been wrong and they've been hurt and it's, it's hard to trust and shoot again when you miss so many times, but God help them to have the hard conversations. Help us to take the limits off of you. Help us to take the limits off of you that we have. The preset limits that we say, oh God, you can do that, but you can't do this. Help us to believe that you are who you are. Help us to believe that you are who you said you are and help us to shoot our shot. Our children need us to shoot our shot. Our families need us to shoot our shot. Our churches need us to shoot our shot. Our communities, our nieces, our nephews, they need us to shoot our shot. They are trusting that we will have faith not in our ability, not in our own talent, but the God who holds the arrows. So God, help us to direct the arrow where it should go. Listen, I, I want to, all heads bowed, eyes closed. This is going to be different. It's not just an altar call for heart transformation. Christ is in the heart transformation business, not behavior modification business. But maybe you are in this space and you're like, Pastor, my heart is sick. I want you to be bold to stand. Pastor D, like I, my heart is sick. Like I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, man, I'm trying, but I'm that one. My, my heart is, is, man, it's, if I, if I, if I told you, it, it may be even at God, like, man, how, how could you let me serve you all these years and then you let me die like this? How you gonna play me like that? I've been, I've been serving you all these years and you gonna let me die of this illness? I've been healing people in my ministry and this is what you're gonna let me die of? Five seconds, I wanna pray with you. I'm not gonna put a mic to your face. I'm not gonna ask you to come forward. I just wanna pray with you if you're a pastor D. That's because the first step to getting free is you, you, gotta, you gotta be honest with yourself. Yeah. You gotta be honest with yourself. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. Pastor and preach it, man. I've been there. I've seen it. I know how it is to pour out everything you have, and they leave you on the side of the road empty. But you gotta keep that heart right. We're going to pray this. We're going to pray that those that don't have a heart relationship with Jesus would come to that knowledge tonight. But for those of us that are praying for the second tier, like I just want my heart, my heart right. Number one, we're going to pray, God, I want to invite you into this heart. But then secondly, we're going to pray, God, help me to have the tough conversation so that I can get my heart healed. Because me just moving on don't work. Me just getting over it don't work. 
me just getting more and more a bigger career don't work. Me changing partners don't work. Because eventually sick people make other people sick. Father, in the name of Jesus as the prophet who came to you and said, my father, my father, we come to you like the king. My father, my father, my, my whole lineage is destroyed. My grandma ruined our whole family. I don't have any family. I don't have any friends. I'm coming to you. My father, my father, my heart is heavy. My heart is broken. My father, my father, the people I trusted and they betrayed me. My father, my father, my father, I come to you. I, I've made my own decisions and some of this may be my fault, but I'm still suffering. My father, my father. I want to be better. I don't want to be bitter. I want to be free. I want to be free. I want, I want my heart to flow with joy peace, love. I, I doesn't mean I won't have any problems. Doesn't mean I won't have any trials, but I want my heart to be healthy. Because just as much as you're concerned about my holiness, you're concerned about my wholeness. So Father, I pray that I won't use my gift my business, my career, to mask the pain of my heart. Holy Spirit, my brother and sister, they may have never faced this reality, but today they're saying to themselves, the person that broke me, I release them now. They're never coming back to say sorry. And I don't want to be in this cage anymore. I don't want to be in this bondage anymore. I don't want to be in this day wondering will they come back and apologize and make it right and, and do the right thing and say the right thing. God, if they never come back, I will go to you as my father. So today, Holy Spirit, would you flood their heart? Would you flood their heart with a joy unspeakable? Would you flood their heart with a peace, a tenacity, a courage, a courage to be courageous? And Father, for the backslider that doesn't know you in the pardon of their sins, I pray tonight that this would be a night of conversion. So there's someone in this space. You've been waiting on a sorry forever. And God sent me to tell you, you may never get it. clean heart, a right spirit, wash me with hyssop, that I might be white as snow. I don't want to take everything personal from people who are not personal. to be happy. Help me to be healthy so that I can be happy. It's in Jesus.
Jesus' name. Let me give you these next instructions. If you don't face your giants, your giants will kill you. This is what I'm going to do to you all year. Which means guard your heart. Not just this, but this. Don't just do this next year. Do this. Would you clap your hands if you receive that tonight?